Hello everyone, in today's script demo, I'm going to show you a script that is able to create subtitles like this you see on the screen now. And so if you're interested in this script, then please continue watching. All right, welcome back and let's begin. Now, one day I came across this script called Vis2 Image to Text OCR. It performs optical character recognition to recognize characters on your screen or, or an image and output that into a subtitle. And I looked at that and I liked the subtitle, so I decided to glean the subtitles from the script and created a library out of it just in case I want to use it in the future to create and display subtitles and this library can be accessed from my website if you go to archive and auto haki select the drop down and go all the way down to script demo number 14 these two subtitles and copy all of that go to your folder where you're going to save your main script to and then create a new auto haki script and Go into it to edit it and override everything that's inside with the clipboard. Now, I'm going to call this new script this to subtitles library. So let me save this script, get out back out to my folder and rename the file to this subtitles library. And I'm going to open up my test script one, which I'm going to use to utilize this library to create the subtitles and I'm also going to open the these two subtitles library to bring the examples that are saved in the library. Now this is the example and let me uncomment some of these. So I've got single instance force and then include this two subtitles library lines of codes to include the library and then the most basic form of subtitle can be created using this method so you go this to dot graphics dot subtitles dot render and then what goes inside this first argument is the text you're going to input in the subtitle and then the second argument is it, it, these are all optional so if I just remove this and run it I will get on top left hand corner um, a subtitle that says the text that I have provided in my first argument and if you put in a T5000 this means five seconds so right now this is not going to go away until I exit out of the script using the exit key but if I save the script and run it with the timer set to 5000 milliseconds the subtitle will show and it will disappear five seconds later. Now if I remove the time and remove this bit and render the script again the subtitle will be there always until such time you terminate the script and that's because the script is running always in the background. Now if you had removed the exit key and just added exit app which means you show the subtitle and then immediately exit app this is going to pretty much do nothing because you showed the subtitle and exited out of the script immediately. So let me add back the exit key hotkey so this script becomes a permanent or persistent mode script so the subtitle will be displayed as long as I press the exit key to exit the script. So that's the basic and the most um, default uh, version of the subtitle and the next example uh, we have some modification made to the subtitle so we have this string that's going to be shown up in the subtitle for five seconds and these x and y coordinates are the coordinates on which the subtitle will be shown and then a padding this p stands for padding of five percent and this can be replaced with any absolute number of say 50 as well and c represents color and yellow and this is going to be the color of the subtitles background and R stands for radius and radius of 50. So this second argument is one set and each of the attributes are separated by a space. And then the third argument is also 
is also um, a set of attributes that you give to the subtitle and this is more related to the font the size of the font the family and the color of the font and likewise you have to separate these attributes out by spaces so starting with the first one is the font family and this is the bolding so b1 is bold if you leave that out then it's nothing no bolding and s means size and 30 means 30. Uh, c is color and blue uh, i'm giving it a color of blue so if i run this subtitle i get a subtitle that looks like this All right let's move on to the next example which is subtitle 2 and this time I've also provided an X and Y coordinates, in, but this time I've provided in terms of percentage points. So 10% is going to be roughly 10% uh, of the screen size starting from the left. So it's going to be around here. And then Y is going to be a quarter of the screen height. So it's going to be down here. And then this uh, color, which is not like the ordinary color name you see, but you can if you go searching for hex color on Google, you can grab this number here and then add it to this part to change the color. So let me go back and grab that number. Now, of course, you can change the color to whatever you want. And add that here after the C. And then um, M stands for margin. Margin is dirty and font is algerian so let me go save it and hit it then you will see a subtitle that looks like this with the color that you have provided which um, i've lost it but which kind of is like this um okay so that's that and uh, the next example i've got is an X that uses center as its reference. So the subtitle is going to be placed somewhere in the center in terms of the X coordinate and Y also in the center. So it's going to appear in the center of the screen and a padding of 2%. And then this is a transparent color. So um, right now, up until now, we've seen background that is not transparent and blocking out what's behind it. But by providing this color, you'll make it transparent and only show pretty much the string of text that you provide and then a font of impact and this is outline and this number can be changed as well. So the higher the number you provide will have a bigger width of outline around the, around the subtitle and then a, a size of the font of 5% and Previously, I provided sizes of the font in absolute number, but you can also provide in percentage points and a color of the font of red. And then this is drop shadow, I believe it is. And uh, it's probably just better to show what it looks like instead of explaining in words what drop shadow is. So you can see that the, this black shadow is the drop shadow. And by increasing the number of the drop shadow, you can lengthen it out or shorten or decreasing the number to sh to shorten it now so you you'll see maybe i can change some of these aspects so i can uh, change the outline to one to for you to see the difference let me just get a screen capture of that and maybe i can i don't know maybe increase it and run it again and you'll see the difference so uh, becomes the drop shadow becomes slightly more distant and uh, the outline becomes thinner so um, the outline around the letters become a lot less visible and you can see that it, you can see through background is transparent as well All right and the next example we've got is an X coordinate that refers to left so it's gonna sit all the way to to the left and Y coordinate of 700 pixels with a padding of 1.35 percent and the color of the background will be white with a radius of 15 and it uses this font family bookman old style and i means italic so if you leave that out then that means no italic 
and if you add it in it means italic with a font size of 2.33 percent and font color of black so if i run this i'll get a subtitle that looks like this now the next one we've got is x position to the right so all the way to the right and y 90 percent so and that that can also be provided in percentage points so 90 percent will mean close to the bottom of the screen and with a padding of an absolute number of 20 and this i think is some minty color so let me run that and see what we get radius of 8 and font of bauhaus 93 b1 for bolding u1 for underlying size of the font and color of the font so let me run that and that's what you get and then the next example i think it's exactly the same as this but i gave a bit of a spin to the color and this 66 represents the transparency so if i run that you get a subtitle with the background faded out compared to the subtitle before so if I move this up here to show that it's become transparent, you can see through the background now. And you can, of course, you can adjust this to maybe lower it down to 20 and it becomes even more transparent. And if you make it 99, then it becomes less transparent, so on and so forth. And so finally, I've got a subtitle that looks like the standard subtitle when you run it. It sits at the bottom of the screen, around about the middle with white font and semi-transparent black color background. So this is the end of the demonstration of the examples. Let's see what happens if I run all of these subtitles all together at once. And this is what you get. Okay, and just before we go, I wanted to point out just one thing. While I was playing around with this library, I noticed that when I provided, say for example, this font family, which actually is bookman space old space style, it didn't work because you, the script uses the line spacing as a separator for these attributes that you provide to these subtitles. So what I did is remove the line spacing which regionally didn't work obviously because it weren't the script weren't recognize what bookman all style without the spaces and what so what i did is i went to the library and then there's going to be somewhere down here which i did i added a few lines to convert for example bookman old style without the space into bookman space old space style for the script to be able to successfully recognize a font family and change to that and this is what's called a ternary operator and what this basically does is it's sort of like the if statement where it goes if f equals bookman old style is does it equal yes then you give f a value of bookman all style or string value of bookman all style otherwise you'd leave it as it is so you've got the expression assignment here and then that's the condition and then that is the string value that you're assigning to f if the condition is true otherwise you're assigning f to f so ie do nothing so if you want to add, say, for example, a Times New Roman, if you want to change the font to Times New Roman, I would suggest that you go Times New Roman in your main script that brings the subtitle up and within the library, add another line, copy the line above to convert Times New Roman with no spaces with Times New Roman with spaces like that all right this is it for today's script demo i hope you enjoyed watching it and i'll see you in the next video thank you